Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to recreate a DJ Mustard style Instagram theme or feed using Photoshop and Instagram. So let's get into it. Okay, so jumping into Photoshop, this is an example of a final result that we're going to put together in Photoshop and with some guides and saving techniques, I'll show you how to save them into perfectly fitting Instagram squares so that they all end up in a folder on your desktop ready for you to transfer to your phone and upload to Instagram so they all fit together into a collage. So let's begin by considering a few principles about how to think about our feed. So this is my Instagram, shameless plug, go follow me. I post cool pictures and behind the scenes all the time. But when you're looking at the grid, you could chunk it up in different ways, but one way that is easy to consider is nine square squares because you have three pictures for every row or line and if you take three rows or lines you get a perfect square. One square on Instagram, a good size for it to display in high quality is 1080 by 1080 pixels so when you consider the whole nine that ends up being 3240 pixels by 3240 pixels. So that's actually the size of the canvas that we want to create in Photoshop. So let's go to File, New, and let's create a 3240 by 3240 document. So press OK and we'll open up that square. But now, how do we get the guides on there to chop it up into perfectly fitted for Instagram squares? It's actually pretty simple since we're using an even amount of splits. So first of all, I like to make sure I'm working with the rulers on and extras on so we can see all the guides that we're gonna create. So make sure those are turned on either by using the shortcuts Command R and Command H or checking them in the view menu. And then you wanna to go to view and create a new guide layout. Now this is gonna allow you to place a bunch of guides on here by specifying how many you want. So under the columns, we're gonna create three columns for the three squares and three rows as well. That works out perfectly. However, you see there's still a bit of margin that they're giving us. So just uncheck the margin box and now you have your nine Instagram squares to visualize and these are gonna come in handy when we're saving them into slices. So the next step is to prepare your photos that you want to lay out and arrange. And there's a lot of ways you could do this. You could have them all open already and drag them in one by one. This is kind of a workflow preference but the way I'm gonna do it is I have all of my photos selected and I've arranged them into a folder because I know I want to use these for my collage and I'm just going to highlight all of them and then with Photoshop open we can kind of drag Photoshop to the left so that the canvas is still open then drag the photos over and then just take them all and drop them into the actual canvas so now it's going to begin smart placing them all one by one now you could use this in your workflow you could carefully place them each, scale them each, make sure you hold shift to constrain proportions, and then press enter and move on to the next one. Or if you want to have them all laid out first and then arrange them, you could just press enter, enter, enter till you reach the end of the import process and then you'll have them all in their own layers and be able to scale and transform them that way. As you can see, Photoshop is importing them as smart objects, so that means don't worry about transforming it up and down, you won't lose size quality unless you stretch past their original limits. So now's the fun part, now's the creative part. You could use effects, you could use adjustments on just one layer, you could incorporate little Polaroid templates and scribble on them with the brush tool and you could really do whatever you want. This is where you make the theme your own and you just arrange it. So I'm just gonna do a basic arrangement like how DJ Mustard does his. If you notice on his, there's lots of overlapping images right on top of each other. Nothing's too perfectly blended together. And usually there's one main image that fills up a square and then a couple that cut into it. So a few other things to keep in mind is balance and color. Make sure the visual weight of all the pictures doesn't overwhelm each other and that colors and shapes make sense within each other and also make sure there's no not filled in spaces unless you're going to incorporate that into your look. One cool tip when you're working with a lot of different layers and you're not sure how to get to the one you want 
is if you hold command you can actually click on different layers and it'll highlight them so you can see oh I want to move that one a little and you don't have to go digging for it every time another thing to keep in mind is if you want one layer to be in front or bring one layer back again find it in the layers panel or press command and click on it to find it easier and then you can drag the actual layer below some other layers so you could rearrange things how you want. If you want to take a look at what it's looking like without the guides, you can always press Command H to hide or show the extras, or you could do that in View Extras. Now once you're happy with how you have everything laid out in Photoshop, our final step is to get things ready to save for Instagram. So since we have these guides up already, we can use those to slice up our image for Instagram so everything fits in the squares perfectly. To do this, you need to find your slice tool, which is right under the crop tool. And in the slice tool menu, you should see this button that says slices from guides. And that'll create slices right from your guides, which gives us our nine squares that are ready for Instagram. So to save through these slices, you wanna go to file, export, save for web. And when you're in this menu, you could select PNG 24 for a good quality. And then when you press save, I like to have a folder ready on my desktop that's empty so I can save these photos into them. So I had created one before this tutorial called Instagrid1. And you want to select slices, all slices for the saving setting. And that'll make sure it saves the nine separate squares that you made. So press save and I'll show you guys what pops up in my folder. So once it's done saving, you'll see that there's a new images folder wherever you selected it to save and it has your nine separate squares ready for you to upload to Instagram. Now remember when you're uploading you need to start with square nine and work your way to square one. The last photo is going to be here is the first one you post and then you post the next one and the next one and the next one which as you can see on the grid is nine eight seven six five four three two one. So you need to post them starting in the bottom right corner. Now some more advanced things to keep in mind is if you wanna keep this theme going over several months and you're gonna end up posting more than nine squares, you wanna have a way to organize this PSD so that you can keep it going without having a clean break every square or every nine photos. So there's lots of different workarounds that you could come up with, but one way that I can offer you to do this and keep things fitting is take your first or your finished collage when you first do it, grab all those layers, hold shift, select them all, and put them into a group. And you can call this uh, like week one or month one or however you want to post, however frequently you want to post. Now, of course, these things might have some parts that overlap past our canvas. So let's say your images have some parts that overlap past the canvas and you want those to continue as you post what would be photos zero and negative one and negative two on here, you know? So what you can do to kind of work around this is let's create a new layer. So layer, new layer. And I'm gonna hide my extras for now just to show you guys what's going on. Grab your rectangular marquee tool, select the entire canvas and then right click and stroke inside with about 10 pixels just so we could see it since this is such a large document. I'll just use the color white. I suppose you could use any color that sticks out to you for your image. Press OK. And now we have a, a bit of a guide for us to use. OK, so put this little guide that we just created on top of everything, but still within the group. So. Now, like I said, let's say you still had parts of the group that you wanted to continue on as you create your next nine squares. So what you'd simply do is take this group, grab your move tool, make sure you're holding shift so you don't mess up the alignment of things and just move your photo all the way down. And you see why we put that white line there is because it's gonna tell us where our last nine squares ended. So what you just do is grab your arrow key at this point and just keep moving it down until that white line disappears. And now you can go back underneath that new group and drag in a whole new set of photos, repeat the whole process once again, and you'll see that those last parts of the photo will still be sticking out from underneath, allowing you to continue this theme 
while still fitting things and making it seem seamless without any edges on every nine squares. With that workaround, you can continue doing that over and over and keep the feed moving up as long as you need to. And for each set, you would just go to file, export them all into the folder, and then upload them in reverse order, 98765432. So that's basically how you create this collage style feed like DJ Mustard uses. You guys can customize it on all your own and you guys can take that slicing technique and use it to create whatever type of theme, idea, or feed you have in mind. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for future videos. If you wanna follow me on social media, you can find me at Justin Odisho. I'd love to connect with you guys on there. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.